Hi, welcome. This is a much anticipated new product from Multi Wee Copter. It is the Scarab Armored Gimbal Black. And it is um, a brushless gimbal. It doesn't look so much lying here in pieces, but um, it's uh, the engineering and everything that's gone into this is quite mind blowing, actually. Um, right down to the point where you use your existing 8 ball mount on your GoPro 3 as part of the gimbal. So this doesn't come with the gimbal, the 8 ball. So if you're going to build a gimbal, this brushless gimbal, and you don't already have an 8 ball, make sure you order one with the gimbal kit. Now this is the 2 axis gimbal, and really it's designed for uh, the larger airframes. Um, it's probably going to be a bit big for a Recon 3 unless you extend the booms, but there is a different version for the Recon. To go with the gimbal, there is also the Paris Sirius SB gimbal controller, which is powered by the Alexmos Basecam software. It's a fully licensed product, and uh, unlike the other ones out there, it's in a lovely hard metal case. Beautiful bit of design. Um, uh, it, the sensor as well is fully enclosed. Um, even comes with a little bit of um, sticky gel on the back. And the really cool thing is that if you buy all of this as a package, the controller with the gimbal, the controller is preloaded with, at the moment, version 2.2 software, which is only just out last couple of weeks um, and it is fully calibrated with the sensor and it is the PIDs are set and it's been pre-tuned for this gimbal so to a certain extent the whole setup of this is a bit plug and play but but if you don't put this together properly and get it balanced right and get it working right none of that will mean anything because it just plain won't work this is an advanced build now a lot of you out there think i'm advanced i can do this stuff i'm not a beginner but a lot of you actually are um from some of the comments we get on scarab builds and stuff and some of the questions we get um a lot of you think the word advanced means you um, this is beyond advanced the build on this gimbal it is very simple to assemble don't get me wrong but tuning it and making it work right is beyond advanced this is like doctorate level stuff okay a lot of it's already pre-done for you a lot of it is simple but um, getting this right you really need to know what you're doing so if you are even mildly hesitant about your building skills or your balancing skills or tuning skills then this is not the gimbal for you or at least find someone who does know what they're doing to build it for you okay because if you don't get the build right you don't get the balance right on this nothing else is going to work properly okay now a few comments about various bits um, one of the things that's really make, sets this apart is, from a lot of the other cheaper gimbals out there, is everything that needs to be square is perfectly square. All right. A lot of the cheaper gimbals out there, even the not-so-cheap gimbals out there, 90 degrees is 89 degrees, or even as bad as 85 degrees, we've found. Um, and if stuff isn't perfectly square and isn't perfectly balanced, and doesn't run perfectly true then the gimbal is never going to work no matter how much time you spend tuning PIDs in the controller and stuff the gimbal just isn't going to work if everything isn't aligned square and balanced all right so let's get down to the build I'm just going to put the two motors aside they are a specific new carbon bird um, gimbal motor and yes they will be available as spare parts if you need them all right so i'm just going to put the two motors aside for the moment and most of these bits and just go through some of the hardware that comes with the kit now you actually get 
the moment two different size screws but I've suggested to multi wee they also include these so you've got the long M3 the mid size M3 and the short M3 they have to go in specific places you have to make sure you have the right screw at the right time so I will if I don't refer to it as a short or a long um, the mid size M3 is what I'm referring to and you also get some of the beloved little M2 screws as well and some grub screws which we'll go through as we use it it's actually quite a simple build putting it together is very easy but there are a few pitfalls so I'm going to try and cover them as I do the build okay so let's get started and the first thing I'm going to do is look at these this set of bits here which forms the central yoke part of the frame all right so pretty simple to assemble but there are a couple of tricks okay first thing I'm going to do is take this ring and I'm going to attach it to the carbon plate okay using the medium sized screws now one thing that is absolutely vital on this build I say it's vital for every build but really it will be your downfall is you must lock tight your screws okay so the first thing I'm going to do nice little blob of Loctite on that screw through the carbon into the back part of the plate now there's a long nose on this plate you can see there that goes up along the length of the carbon plate so second screw goes through there into there and we're going to tighten that up now you've got a couple of other smaller screw holes there there's one at the end tip here I'm not going to bother with but these two side ones I am going to take a couple of the M2 screws I'm going to put Loctite on one of them now if you look carefully here it's a bit hard to see there is actually a split here in this ring so this actually clamps up here with a bolt through so this side away from the split I'm going to lock tighten the screw and screw that in to the back okay tighten that up make sure these other two are tight okay then I'm going to take one more of the M2s no lock tight and I'm just going to pop it into that top hole but I'm not going to actually tighten it up. I'm just going to snug it up, but I'll leave it a little loose because that top part of that top curve of it is going to move as we clamp up. Now, you get three of the long screws. This is where the first of the long screws goes. It goes through this clamp. So through and in. Now, I'm not putting Loctite on this at this point in time because this is one of the key adjustments you're going to need to make to get the balance and everything's right on the gimbal okay so I've just popped that in haven't even tightened it up yet because the next thing I'm going to do is take the thick piece of carbon tube and I'm going to pop that through from the metal work end okay and what I want to do is I want to bring it through so approximately two mil that's the starting point for you if you're using a GoPro 3 two millimeters of tube is proud can't quite see that so I want to get two millimeters of tube beyond the plate okay Look pretty good there so I'm just going to tighten that up a little so it's sort of holding it but I still got a bit of free movement a bit more okay and I'm going to set that to 3mm now you will have to adjust this later 2mm is a good starting point alright so there we are at 2mm so I'm just going to snug that up now remember that top one that little M2 there at the top hasn't been locked tight and hasn't been tightened up so just for the moment 
just going to snug it up a little bit. I'll have to loosen that off when I adjust this later. Okay, next step is to take the, um, this is the roll motor bracket, which attaches to the other end of this carbon rod. Now, it actually has a stop in it. If you look, it's a bit hard to see, but there is actually a little ridge inside there. So that goes on and stops. Okay, so that is a set length at that end. Now, I grab two more of my screw, my, M, my mid sized M3 screws, and they go into this clamp. And again, I've added a bit of Loctite at this point in time to my screws. Don't forget your Loctite. For those who haven't seen it before, I just have a little plastic tray, dob a block Loctite on it, so I just dip the tip in. You don't need a lot, but you do want to sort of fill the threads a bit. Okay. Second screw in. Plate on. And I'm just going to snug up. You need to sort of tighten them together. Because they're both pulling this clamp up. Now, the, the critical thing here is I need to get this surface here square with that plate. Now you can see there's an angle on that. That's nowhere near straight. And there it is gone the other way. So they're a bit tight. So that's stopping me moving this smoothly. But I need to get, this is critical, this square to this. All right. Now, one trick I had picked up from over, over the ages is from a guy called Mr. Mel. He's a bit of a helicopter guru. And he's come up with a method of making sure sensors and stuff go squarely onto things using um, Lego. Now Lego is great because it clips together. You can make all sorts of shapes like, oh, let's make the world's smallest set square. All right? But it does go together square. It, all the edges are parallel. Lego is really handy because it is um, a readily available smooth edge and stuff. So what I can do with the Lego is I can take a couple of these bits, these long thin bits, sit them on top of that motor mount, and I can actually sight down. And there's actually a slot here in the plate, which the motor lead ends up going through, right? And what I can do is I can actually look from the Lego blocks and see and sight the side of the Lego to the side of to that slot and actually see if we're square and it's really obvious if you're not so I'm just going to nudge that a little that way and that's looking really good so now I'm going to snug these two right up if you're a tiny bit out at this point in time it's probably not critical because you're going to be adjusting this distance later when you adjust this distance, this is going to move, so you're going to have to recheck this as the build progresses. So I'm going to snug those two up. Okay, have another look. Trusty Lego block. Check that that is in fact square for now, because if you know we fluke this two millimeter thing is the right sort of overhang, we won't have to actually adjust this any further later. All right. So snug all that up, snug everything up. Then finally, if we flip this over the other way, there's a hole in the bottom here for a grub screw. So I'm just gonna grab one of those. Oh. Yeah, tiny bit of Loctite, and into that hole goes the grub screw. Okay, that central arm section is now assembled.